Hey, hey, Tony guys here popping in. Now listen, we still talking on this here little series here because I wanted to pop out. We on an off day today from soccer in Phoenix, Arizona. And me and my wife and Lil Tatum, we just took us a nap. Woke up, told my wife, hey, got to get out here to the car and do the Lord's work. Now listen to me. One of the things that I see and hear a lot a lot of people misunderstanding Apostle Paul when he's talking about singleness. And a lot of people saying, hey, you know, singleness is good. And hey, nothing wrong with singleness. And, you know, Paul say it's good to be single. And that is true when you are completely 100% devoted to the work of God. So go to the Holy Bible and read the life of Paul. As you're reading the 13 books of the Bible that Paul wrote, you will then see why he said, why it was inspired by God in his spirit to write that he wished everybody would be single and focused on the work of the Lord. But if you cannot be abstinent, meaning if you cannot live a celibate lifestyle, then you should get married. So if you are single and you are fornicating, your singleness is disqualified as good. If you are single and you are not committing your life to the work of God, then you should be seeking a relationship to advance the human race forward. When you are single, your focus should not be on yourself, especially if you're quoting the Bible. Your focus should be on God. So what that means is when you're single, this is when every day, you can go to not just work, but you can go to the church. When you single, you can open up the doors of the church for prayer meeting. You can open up the doors of the church for prayer study. You can lead the Bible study. You can lead the prayer service. You can go to the daycare that the church has and you can work with the children. You can be a usher. You can be the driver of the van that picks up the people in the neighborhood and bring them to church. Your whole life becomes the word of God. It becomes the kingdom. So what you got to understand is Paul went from city to city preaching the word of God. And he dedicated his life to the word of God. Paul went to prison. Look at the way that Paul died. So what he was saying is when you are married, now your work is of the world, meaning you got to take care of your wife first or your husband first. Then you to do the things of God. That's why y'all hear me say that my wife is my first ministry. My children are my first ministry. I take care of them. So that's why when I was going around the world, I was going around the world all year round and I was helping other people. I was doing seminars. I'm helping people heal, break trauma bonds, identify their pain points, get healing. But I was away from my wife and children. Then I'm traveling every week and I'm working with grown men, trying to help them break their porn addiction, trying to help them come out of fornication, trying to help them have a closer and better relationship with God. Every single week, I'm on a plane, flying to work with these young men every single week. And then one day I came home and 
life had been good to me. I was blessed. And me and my eight-year-old son, I was driving him to school in a Maserati. Now this Maserati is the Maserati Gran Turismo. This is not the Maserati Ghibli. Now there's a di the difference is the Gran Turismo, mine was about a hundred and sixty thousand dollar car. It's the racing. It's the racing one. Loud old pipes on there. So I'm thinking an eight year old. I ain't, I ain't bragging for those of the people that always think somebody bragging. I'm just telling the story. So I'm thinking my eight year old is just so excited to be in this sports car, and he did. He loved it. Everybody at the school loved it. He was a cool kid getting dropped off in the Maserati. To the point that another dad went and bought the same model right in a different color and let his uh his girlfriend drop his kids off in, in the model right. And my son was talking. He was talking, talking, talking. And all I was thinking about was the problems that was going on in the young man life that I was helping on that professional sports team. It was an NBA team. I'm thinking about they grown folk problems while my eight-year-old talking 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 and i said to my eight-year-old see that's the thing i'm transparent with my own story a lot of people don't understand that I said to my eight-year-old i say son it's okay to be quiet sometime he still got the same thing at 16 which is some truth to that he talked non-stop the only time he quiet is when he's looking at his phone but my son talked non-stop so I still have to tell him, even at 16, son, like, it's, calm down, son. Calm down. He got a lot of energy. He is a ball of energy. He is a ball of life. He like his mama. He is like his mama. Me, I'm an introvert. I'm very quiet. Tayden, he's just like me. Me and Tayden could be in the car. Tayden will talk a little bit, but Tayden could ride in silence. He could ride quiet with no game, with no TV. We both introvert and quiet and then lively around people that we know and comfortable with. And he said, my eight year old, he told me he's 16 now. He said, well, dad, I am quiet sometimes, but you wouldn't know because you're never here. That thing hit me like a ton of bricks. That is what Paul meant when he said, when you get married, you have to tend to the things of the world. What Paul meant is, Paul was saying he doesn't have to be home for his children. He doesn't have to be home for his wife because he didn't have a wife and children. So when you use Paul as an example, if you're not living like Paul, if you're not moving the kingdom forward, see, a human is for one or two things to move the kingdom of God forward or to move the human race forward or to do both. Understand purpose. Understand purpose. God did not create a corporation. God made heaven, earth, animals, humans. God never built a sky ride, a skyscraper. God never built an industrial complex. God never built a corporation. He made man and mankind made schools and made businesses. When you are going to work and coming home, you are working for man, not for God. When you are being a light for Christ, you are working in the kingdom or you are raising children or working with children. Now you working for God because even when you raising children, if you raising them for God, you doing like what Jesus said. Jesus said, don't turn none of these children away. Jesus said, I wish every adult had childlike faith. Jesus said, if you, if you do these kids wrong, you'd be better off putting a 
brick round your neck or whatever he said and and throwing yourself into the deep of the ocean look how christ spoke about us treating children so people say oh i don't want kids i don't want kids you know why you got to get to the root of it because to have kids whether that is to birth kids or to adopt kids or to work with kids meaning volunteering or working at the boys and girls club working at the shelters working at the nonprofit organizations it means that you have to be selfless you have to care for someone other than yourself you have to deal with the emotions of another human being children require a lot my son sneezing today i got tired of hearing him sneeze i wanted to go to cvs to get every kind of medicine in the world i got just tired of hearing him sneeze he's just and he wasn't even sneezing a lot it was just every now and then but guess what that is i have to every time him sneeze i gotta regulate because it's like listening to somebody chew how it could drive you crazy you have to regulate you got to talk to your brain you got to say it's okay somebody just eating you got to eat to live everybody everybody is not aware that their mouth is open everybody not reminded to chew with their mouth closed everybody was not taught to chew with their mouth closed you just regulating emotional intelligence otherwise you'd be ready to snap if your brain have that thing in it my brain got that thing in it my youngest tating he, he <coughs> But he's so little, he's such a little kid. It's just, it's like walking and chewing bubble gum, they say. You know, it's like you trying to chew and then you trying to, and you loving the food, you you hungry. And, and you so chewing with your mouth closed, you end up looking like a cow trying to, so it's something we develop. And I see grown folks. I be around grown people who don't chew with their mouth closed. Smiking. I, I, I. But because my brain got that, I'm very aware of it. I eat slow. I chew with my mouth closed because I'm aware of it. Because it, it, my brain pick it up. Not everybody's brain do. And so this is the thing. That's why I say the goal of this is development. The goal of this is development. And you're going to have on-the-job training. You don't go to the job already trained. That's why when you apply for a job, it say must have two years experience because they saying you need to go get on a job as an intern. And as an intern, you need to learn how to do this job. You need to go get on an entry level and learn how to do this job. So that's what happens is you're going to develop in marriage. A lot of people don't understand it. They say, oh, well, no, people shouldn't get married if they're not, if they're not healed, if they're not developed. Nobody is healed 100%. Nobody is developed 100%. That, that's called perfection. 100% is perfection. Nobody's perfect. Every single day, my wife and I still have to regulate our spirits. Every single day, we still have to be emotionally intelligent. Every single day. Every single day, there's a reason for her to get mad. There's a reason for me to get mad. When you're dealing and you're around other human beings, any little thing could set you off. Any little thing could get on your nerves. Any little thing could bother you. It is a constant. We're going on 17 years of marriage. That don't mean stuff perfect because I could get on her nerves. She had to, she had to put up with me snoring. So guess what? She got to tell her brain, I love this man. He must be really tired. He done put some of that weight on. He got to sleep. My body, I, I run and I've been doing great off less sleep than him. He very cranky if he don't get the same amount of sleep that I get. He gonna, She got to tell herself something. Is she doing something? She like to play around a lot. I don't like to play around a lot. So I got to tell myself, if she playing, that's a good thing. That means she happy. That means she love me. That means she in a good space. So what you got to understand is the purpose of marriage 
the purpose of working with children or having children to where if you can't have children biologically, then you should adopt children. If you can't adopt children, then the least you should do is still find a way to impact the lives of children. And people don't, people get it confused when they say, oh, you say you look down on men who not married. I don't look down on anybody. What I said is I don't look up to a man who's not married. I don't admire a man who's not married. I'm still going to respect him. I'm still going to be nice to him. But I don't respect him in the form of respect that is like revering him or reverence or admiration. I look at a man who is over the age of 35 and not married. I look at him as a man who is still developing. Even though we all developing, but he developing on something in a deeper way. Like he, he has more development to do and it could just be his mindset. It could be his heart's posture. It could be childhood trauma. It could be things he's seen, things he's heard, or it could be him knowing himself and knowing that he can't be faithful yet, knowing he doesn't believe in just one woman, being with one woman, knowing. And so I still see him as a man in progress. If he's actively working, like if he's a good man and he's working on himself as a single, as a single man, I see him as a man that's working. And here's the thing, what that, but what that says to me is it's impossible. As good as a guy that he could be, emotional intelligence is developed. That comes from training the brain. So as great of a guy this 40-year-old single man could be, I know that he's not going to be as emotionally and mentally developed as a man who has to live with a woman every day because he's living with another human being and he has to know how to adapt and adjust his spirit and his mind to get along with another human being every single day. And then a man who has children in the home or animals that he has to take care of, that is even another level of development because a dog could drive you crazy because the dog is forever a toddler because you got to walk your dog three times a day. That's service. That's selflessness. So even when you single, you ought to get you a dog or a cat. Well, not a cat. They too independent. Get you a dog because you got to take that dog out and walk that dog. Don't get the dog with a doggy door and go out and do a thing and come back in the house. No, get your dog. You got to walk. You got to walk around the complex of the neighborhood. Get your dog. And that's going to help develop you mentally. Because you got to be selfless. You got to be caring. And some of y'all to beat on your dog. Some of y'all don't abuse your dog. I, I, I understand the brain. Yeah, I don't know you. I ain't never met you. But I know you didn't hit that dog too hard. That's the brain. You got to develop it. You got to be able to understand that the dog don't know. You got to be able to understand the dog got to be trained. The dog got to be taught what to do and what not to do. And then you got to understand that if if certain situation it's just gonna revert to its nature the, the dog don't know how to deal with the anxiety the way a human does it might rip up your couch it might rip up your shoes the dog separation anxiety it ain't gonna it's not a human even a human could lose it when it get anxious so that's what it's development this is about human development ironically i worked at the human development center for five years working with mentally disabled grown men, adult men who were lab who had labels put on them. I worked there for five years. I had to learn that helped develop my mind. I had to learn how to adapt, how to adjust and how to talk to and deal with grown men who are very strong and could be very violent. But I had to be able to regulate their spirit, regulate their mind and be around them to where I never had one of them swing on me. I had coworkers that did not understand that who got swung on. Other men and women who got swung on, who got into fights with these clients 
But I, ha I had their respect. They respected me. They loved me. They never tried me. They might say something. There's one that'll say something verbally, but he didn't try me. He called me the N-word when I asked him to go clean up his room, but he didn't try me. But it just was, that was the extent. He would still go do it, but the extent of his mental capacity capabilities was you telling him, asking him to do something. Even if you just took him out to eat, if you ask him to do something, you're going to get cussed, cussed out. But some people, he get up in their face. Some people, he might want to throw something at them. For me, F you in and shoot a bird and go to sh shaking that finger. See, this is what I'm talking about. Every man and every woman should be seeking mental development, emotional development. And that's what a relationship does for you. Because even a relationship, sometimes a relationship will teach you when to walk away. Relationship don't mean it's a death sentence. Until death do us part don't mean until you kill me. Until death do us part don't mean until you kill me. Understand that. So this is what the thing is, is every man needs to aspire to be married and be working towards it. And know that there is a woman for every man. If I don't care if you three feet tall, there's a three foot woman. There, There is a woman that's five foot that'll love you. That's six foot that'll love you. Men have an unfair advantage. There is double standards. There's men that are smaller and got a full size woman. I ain't telling you no lie. There's men who got one inch, one inch private area and got a fully functioning woman. There, there's men who like men and got a wife. There's a woman for every man. You just got to be realistic. You got to be realistic. You got to understand that Chanel Lee Mon, I think that's a supermodel name. Uh, what's the other? Naomi Campbell, Cindy Crawford. Tyra Banks, uh, Halle Berry, whoever you've been lusting after, whoever you think is beautiful, you got to understand they might not think you handsome. You got to like who like you, like my grandma say, but it's a woman for you. You got to, you got to develop past your lust. You got to develop past porn addiction. You got to develop past sex addiction. You got to develop past selfishness. You got to develop past being a introvert or a, a antisocial, meaning you could be an introvert, but that still means you can't be, you got to develop past being antisocial to the point where you don't want to live with nobody. You got to develop past that. Now, the only exception to the rule is when you absolutely are incapable of it. When, when you will not surrender to the power of, of God to allow the power of God to give you the strength and the wisdom and the power to develop past your limitations, then that's when you should remain single. If you know for a fact that you're going to, that you don't and never will have the power to be faithful to a woman then you shouldn't go ruin her life. If you know that you're not capable of not putting your hands on her, not cursing her out, then you should remain single and only be your own destruction. Don't take, don't take a woman with you. If you are committed to self-destructing, don't take her with you. But that's not the will of God for you to self-destruct. God is God and God has all power and God can help you heal. God can help you grow. God can renew you and make you a new creature. God can. God can. So I want you to realize and understand that everything is power possible with God. That you don't have to be single and a bachelor sleeping around. You don't have to be single and lonely. You don't have to be single and miserable. 
And if you single and happy, God bless you. Remain single and happy as long as you single and happy and faithful to God. If you single and happy, but you watching porn and you masturbating or you fornicating, you in sin. So you're not actually single and happy. You, you single and miserable and telling yourself a happy lie. And you got to be real with yourself about that. If a man was not intended to be married, then God would not ha have ever felt that Adam was incomplete. God would have never said that Adam needed a woman. I need you to understand that. And I need you to understand exceptions to the rule. You are not Apostle Paul. You are not Apostle Paul. That is not your calling. You have not been called to write a single book of the Bible. You're not Paul. Paul wrote 13 books of the Bible. You're not Paul. Have you wrote even one book for yourself? Have you gone to another country to minister the word of God? Have you been ostracized and alienated because of the word of God? You're not Paul. Stop comparing yourself to Paul. Stop leaning on Paul's scriptures that he wrote to excuse yourself from marriage if you're not living like Paul live. If you're living like Paul live, you're not watching this video. Paul ain't got time to watch this video. Paul is in the streets doing the work of the Lord. Stop leaning on Paul. You and Paul is not the same. And to the women, this is not to the woman because a woman does not choose a husband. A husband chooses a wife and a woman accepts her husband. She says, yes, I do. But a man who finds a wife, so this not even to women. So to the ladies who's single and you're not, and you single by force or if you single by choice, stay out the comments. I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to men. So stay out the comments. If you're a woman and you don't want kids, your man who is a man of God, when you get your man who is a man of God, it's his duty to raise kids in the likeness of God, with the teachings of God. So you're going to have to get ready to, for kids. Because if whether he want to adopt, if you can't have children, or if he can't have children, he need to be imparting into the life of children. So if you don't like children, then you should not de desire a man either because this ain't about you. This just ain't about you getting no dang lane. This is about us raising the next generation. This is about imparting to the next generation. This ain't about your peace and happiness. That's what humans get, get wrong. Life ain't about your peace and happiness and your peace of the pie in the sky. Life is about purpose. Purpose is not about happiness. Purpose is about intentionality and obedience. Am I saying this soft enough and nice enough for you? If you don't hear me, listen to it again. Get this in your spirit. I ain't going nowhere until God says my time to go. God bless you. We'll talk soon.